I have a new hat. Cool. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, nerds? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we've got a project that we are going to be working on. So, we got a, we got a question for you. Let's just say, let's play out a scenario here, that you're dealing with uh, some older baits, like a lure that you really like, but, you know, the hardware is kind of breaking down, maybe rusting out. Let's say, maybe an alternative option, you bought a brand new bait that just comes with terrible stock hardware. Coming in. There, there, it, is. there it is. So let's say you bought yourself a man's one minus. Guaranteed fish catcher, but it's got garbage hardware, and it's sort of known for being so. Keeps the retail down, which is really nice, because yep. maybe you get two or three, but you got some you got some work to do after that, or it's just gonna fall apart. So, what would you do to upgrade these what, things? What would I do specifically? Yeah, I'm asking you. I actually I don't you. have any clue. Good, I have answers because I actually already <laughs> I did the stuff and the things. Before we get to the stuff and the things, I just want to say thanks for stopping by the channel. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you for maybe liking, maybe even hitting the subscribe button. And that'd be cool. Can we? How do the notification, notification bell? bell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and maybe if you're enjoying the video and you want to participate more, you want to learn with us as we aggressively angle our way to success, <laughs> join us Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern, for our live podcast. Is that, is that what we're doing I now? like it. We aggressively angle. We want you guys to start using that. Please let us know and record it for proof. Uh, but yeah, we go live every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern. We do really fun schmiveaways on we'll there do. where you can get stuff without paying for it. We'll just send it. You can figure it out. So here's what I did. I bought, <laughs> We placed a lure order. I don't know. We're buying a bunch of body baits a couple of weeks ago. All those baits came in. They look great. We did a box and you go check them out. But there were some baits, specifically the man's one minus that I just showed you. Uh, awesome bait. Wanted to get it. But we knew we were going to have a problem with the hardware. So yep. by hardware, I'm talking about the line tie right at the front of the bait where you actually you connect the bait to your line. Uh, it's got this like bronzy looking deal, uh, and then it's got the right size hooks, but they're a lower grade hook, right? So the connection where you're actually adding that other single to the double to make it a treble, uh, low quality, uh, low quality coatings, and then the very the, the coating on these things. If you guys have never had one, is just like sticky, sticky tacky. And it, and it picks up all the dirt in existence, yeah. so they get dirty really fast. So what are we going to do about that, my guy? So we got a couple of things that we're going to do. Uh, so Throw far, it away. <laughs> got it. <laughs> so the first thing that I did was I actually went out and bought some replacement hooks. Oh, my God! <laughs> now, there's a couple things with replacement hooks. One, it can be really difficult to... Um, choose the right size. So mm -hmm. you'll see numbers on the hooks. You'll see two, four, six, eight. Uh, Who do we appreciate? These BKK, BKK, BKK. Spears. <laughs> uh, so that's, I think that's one of the most challenging things, especially as somebody who's like new into fishing. This is mm -hmm. something maybe you're just getting into or you're thinking maybe, hey, maybe you want to upgrade like all my jerkbait uh, hooks, which was me a couple of years ago. Um, knowing what size is very difficult. A lot of times mm -hmm. it's not going to tell you on the bait what size hooks you have. And so you end up doing a little bit of guess and check. And there's a huge amount of variance between a number four a number two and a number six. So you get them all and you put them <laughs> into this thing. That's what I do. So yeah. I got all my split rings, all my trebles there. Yeah. You can swap them out as needed. Um, but or what if a, a big old Bertha like bends out your hook, then sure. you can just have extras. Absolutely. <laughs> so when I'm choosing between a two, four, and a six, or an eight, mm -hmm. uh, eights are going to be the smallest. Uh, not the smallest, but on the smaller end of the spectrum. And eights are usually for like small, tiny river style mm -hmm. crankbaits. So they're going to be like your smallest crankbait. Like for example, a rebel, like those little tiny craws yeah. that they make, an eight or a six is going to go on those. Uh, a two or a four is going to be more like something for, oh no, it's stuck into the thing. A two or a four is going to be more like uh, this size, a larger size. Yeah. Two is probably going to be an upgrade for most hooks, and most of the standard uh, things that the hooks that you've got on standard baits are going to be a size four. So I like to get two, four, six, and eight. That covers like a giant spectrum, but I think yeah. four and six are going to be most of your baits. Jerk baits, size six yeah. usually. Yeah. And then there's there's a whole myriad of types of hooks out there, but I would say there's two that you're going to want to have. One would be an EWG hook, and one would be a straight hook. So this one, you could see where the hook point actually uh, comes back up. It's perfectly straight, and then you've got a longer uh, shank here on that hook. That is better for, I think, in a lot of instances, larger baits and larger square bills. And then you've got an EWG here. Oh, well, there you go. And you can see that there's this little dip and then the hook point actually goes back towards the shank. So it's got like a, almost a G shape. Mm -hmm. Those are better, in my opinion, for smaller baits. I like to see those on size six and eight, uh, and as well as jerk baits. <laughs> Honestly, though, the rule of thumb for me is just mimic whatever's on that bait. You're trying to as close as possible match with whatever you got. 
potentially upsize a little bit with what, what it was made for, right? Exactly. Kind of designed for, so it runs the way that it was built. To That's run. exactly right. As far as brands go, if you're getting a, in my opinion, the Eagle Claw, what is it, the Spear, is it Ultra? Laser Sharp? The Laser Sharp. Eagle Point Laser Sharp. Eagle Claw. God damn, is that what I said? Eagle point. So Jeff talked about the clear coat, right, being yeah. one of the problems. I feel like that's the thing that's maybe the most intimidating and something you feel yeah. like you can't fix, especially but as a new angler. Again, it's just kind of like sticky, tacky, tacky, dirty. It's gonna like it's not your, hard. The dirt from your fingers is gonna get all over this. We'll, we'll wipe this. I know I'm currently doing the problem. <laughs> we'll wipe it down real quick before we dip it in this. All right, so this is an OS uh, coatings. This is a clear coat, uh, a seal coat. Sorry. So this is like the if you were making a bait from scratch, this would be the last step before mm -hmm. you put your hooks and everything on. So you've painted it, you've uh, maybe lightly sanded it to get a, a good texture for this to adhere to. Uh, and all we're gonna do is take the cap off, dip it in, pull mm -hmm. it out, and then let it dry. We're gonna hang it and let it dry. I got this particular one from Do It Molds. Uh, it, honestly, after having them on our show, uh, meeting some of their folks, super great people, and they support a lot of creators that we work with. So if I'm doing any bait making uh, or buying blanks, or in this case, seal coats, paints, anything like that, pretty much going to do it, just because they're good people. Um, yeah. But this is pretty cheap. And the nice thing about the four ounce bottle, another thing that's kind of challenging is there's like a two ounce and a four ounce. Two ounces would be for like painting yourself. Right. The four ounces, you could dip a lot of baits. Even a big one like the man's is gonna fit in here uh, right. and let you just dip and pull out, which is, for me, that's gonna yield like the smoothest possible coating, which is what you're going for. <laughs> so what we're gonna do here is, uh, we'll, we'll move the camera so you can see what we're doing, but mm -hmm. the general idea is I'm gonna open that bottle to the side of this box. I'm gonna dip everything, and then what I have is, in this box I have a string running across here. I'm just gonna dip it, and then hang that bait on the string, and I'm just gonna leave this out in an open, dry area where I know nothing is going to waft over and land on it. I know there's not gonna be any, like a lot of traffic where anyone's gonna bump it. Just keep it a safe, dry place until it actually cures. I have no idea how long this cure is gonna take. I'm not even gonna do the rest of this today. We're gonna do this part of it and finish this video like in a week. We're gonna time lapse. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah. And, so, and I know what you're saying. <laughs> Uh, Paul, this is really high-tech stuff. How could I possibly do this on my own? Yeah. And we get it. Here's the deal. All I hear is the Home Depot <laughs> song. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> you find yourself a box. You get yourself a string. You good. Yeah. And, and you're going to need some sort of a paper clip is my recommendation for the dipping. You'll see what we're, we're going to do. Something we got a jacked-up version because Jeff didn't want to go find a paper clip. I don't but have yeah, any. Something as simple as a paper clip is all you really need uh, in addition to what you see here. So yeah. we're going to move the camera. We're going to dip. We're going to hang, and then we'll see you in a week when we finish the video. <laughs> see you nerds next week. <laughs> all right, so here's your man. So the first thing we got to do is we got to remove all the hardware. So that means this tie-in, and then all the hooks, and uh, the other tie-ins. So what I've got here is a really inexpensive pair of pliers, but they have this little nose here at the end, which makes them a split ring plier. I'm going to take that little point, and I'm going to jam it in between these two wires. That's going to open it up, allow me to pull these off. So I'll show you how we do that. Uh, and don't think that this is gonna happen on the first try, even though these are a little bit bigger. We shall, oh, look at that. First try. Who's good? Some other person. Not you. Not me. Ah, no! I'm stuck! <laughs> See, like I said. Not the first try. I'll oh, just keep going. So that's my, this is my usual tactic. And then we're just gonna repeat that process. All right, so now we have our, our uh, what, nude bait here? <laughs> wow, holy cow, our very, yeah. our very loud bait. Yep. All right, so now we're gonna, before we do the crack that open and do the dip, we gotta have a way to do this, so, uh, to hang this. So what I mentioned was um, you can use a paper clip. Um, I'm gonna use like the most intense clip for papers that you could buy, uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna just do it this way here. This took, don't, don't be fooled. This took Jeff and us, or Jeff and I like five minutes to figure out. But it's gonna work great. It's gonna work great. Before we do the dip, we're gonna take some um, um, painter's tape here, uh, masking tape, and we're gonna cover both of the time, or all three of the, well, both of the time points, and we're gonna cover the lip, just to make sure we don't get any hard uh, sealant on there. All right, so that's what we look like all taped up. Trying to keep it minimal so we can minimize the drips and problems. Uh, now it's time to do the dip. All right, so I actually don't know if this is gonna fit. We're hoping it goes in sideways and then we get uh, a full coverage here, but uh, here goes nothing. 
Oh, 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 it's going to spill everywhere. Oh, all over my desk. Well, not all over, technically. Oh, and it's so, oh. Uh, how do I want to make this mess? Here, I'm going to go inside the box. It's too full. The bait's too big. This jar is going to be a wreck. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> ah! All right, all right, all right. Full dip. What's happening? Full dip. Now we're coming out. Oh, it looks really good, actually. All right. All right. So, you know, we roll, we're rolling with some punches here. We got it. All right. Show them the result. <laughs> uh, show me your hand. It's That's the result. Viscous liquid. Okay. So we dipped it in. We made a giant mess. We were not prepared for that. But we rolled with the punches, and actually it turned out pretty good. Uh, yeah. So we're going to let that do what it does. We're going to let that cure, and we'll see you when it's done. All right, you may notice <laughs> that it's snowing outside and we're not in the office anymore. It's been about two weeks since we left off uh, with our little lure upgrade. Um, and I'm, now we're, now we're, we've let it dry and I'm gonna show you where we're at. So if, you know, right now, I apologize, I apologize. You're hearing some noise over here. There's a road right there. There's also a transformer working overtime down there in the corner trying to keep people's power up as we're dealing with our third snowpocalypse of the year. Um, so where did we leave off? We had just dunked uh, our crankbait, our man's one minus into the OS coating, uh, courtesy of uh, Do It Molds. Thank you guys for always having the goods. Uh, so we just dunked that. Yeah, we spilled a little, but it looked pretty good coming out. Uh, and then we wanted to see, then we, we wanted to see how that clear coat actually turned out, right? Because that was one of the biggest problems with the man's one minus. It's got that like sticky, nasty coating. Uh, so we, we got it done, dude. I cannot express how good this turned out. I was so surprised. This feels like a crankbait, like a high quality crankbait that you'd pay like 10 bucks for. Uh, it just looks so good. Came out super smooth, basically no bubbles at all. Uh, really, really happy with it, especially with no prep on the paint whatsoever. So we're gonna pull off all of our, might have to get my knife out here. I'm gonna pull off all of our tape, our protective tape and see how we did. There it is. Everything is looking pretty good. That close up looks solid. So these, I, I like these ovals. They keep your uh, line where it's supposed to be and they keep you away from getting like sliding into the, sliding or not into the split ring and then maybe coming off or, or getting abrased. So I like that. So there, boom, got them. All right, so next up we got the hooks. So there it is, there's your finished product. New coating, hard, not sticky, not tacky, feeling like a pro job. New upgraded point here up front, tie-in point, got that oval, which we like. And then we got the two upgraded BKK hooks, same style, a little bigger, uh, ready to rock. And then we've got our premium, uh, premium tie-ins as well, sp premium split rings as well. I'm gonna go tie this bad boy up, I'm gonna cast a little bit, Jeff's not here. That sucks for him, so I'm gonna go see if I can catch a couple while we wait. Thank you for checking out this video. If you got a couple old baits, maybe you got some grandpa baits that you just love and you wanna refurbish, dust them up, get a new coating on them, put some new hardware on them, get them back on the water. Thank you to catch any fish hanging on the wall. Yes, we love, oh! <laughs> yes, we love sentimental value, but sincerely, if you got some baits that you just wanna uh, dress up and improve, or maybe you got the man's one minus, a bait that you're like, man, I, I love the way it catches, but they just don't hold up. Upgrade them, couple bucks, make it happen. I love doing it. I do it with all my uh, all my baits. And honestly, at the end of a season, like jerk baits especially, I find myself being like, man, two years into this one, let's just go through and uh, upgrade all the hooks at once. Spend twenty forty dollars, get yourself a buttload of hooks, and then just go make your upgrades. That's all I got for you today, folks. Don't lose the fish for bad hooks, and don't throw away a bait if you don't have to. Thanks for stopping by the channel. Uh, like, subscribe, notification bell. Holy crap! Have a good one. Catch you on the next video. Later, nerds.